Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're back in the fish room and we're talking Mega Tank. All the full complement of fish are back in Mega Tank. It's very clear, it is very healthy, the water parameters are perfect. If you've been following along recently, you know I had a little bit of a spike and we've corrected for that. And I talked about how, not difficult, but how time consuming water changes were on Mega Tank. It's eight foot by four foot by three foot, it's two and a half thousand liters plus. It takes a long time to drain water and to fill water back up again. So I'm going to stop doing water changes. I'm not going to stop doing water changes and fill a glass full of mucky puddle water, chuck it in and just leave it alone. I'm going to do the true lazy way to do water changes, which is a constant drip system. In its simplest method, um, long time subscribers will know I used to do this in my old fish room. You basically have a way for water to escape your aquarium, so that's what these overflows were used for. And add water in, in a constant drip, and it would overflow to waste, jobs are good in. So those are the two crucial components for any auto water change system. We need to get water in, which means water that doesn't need to be dechlorinated, um, doesn't need any manual intervention to get it in there, so some kind of drip system, and we need to get water out. Water in is going to be handled by this. This is my heavy metal axe filter system. So it's basically a sediment filter on the right and two chlorine filter, uh, carbon block filters and carbon granule filters here. Water comes in there, gets cleaned through there, removes any chlorine and the water can go straight into the tank. Now HMA filters, I keep threatening to make a video on them on their own. You can get all different kinds that are rated for different flow rates, rated to remove chloramines as well as chlorine. But in my use case, this is perfectly acceptable. I'm only going to be dripping water in so I can take a feed off this, run a pipe all the way around the fish room so as I don't trip over it, and to make a tank. Part two of the equation is getting water out of the tank. Um, so if you're constantly adding water, you need a way of constantly getting water out. You saw in my old uh, system, I had overflows which ran to drains. Slightly more difficult on this. This is a sump setup that I've got here. Now I could go uber geeky and start messing with pipe work that I've got back here, but what I'm thinking is I have a sump underneath the mega tank. Down there was a big four foot sump. Some kind of float switch, sump pump, get it into the water exit, which is this barrel here. Might need to do some nifty routing to get water around so as it's not going through the middle of the fishing, but we'll worry about that later. Right, that's the plan anyway. So as I can't rely on gravity to get water out of the aquarium, um, I'm going to use a pump. And this is very much overkill for what you need to do. We could do something with a small pump and a float switch that you can buy very cheaply, but I've gone for this sump pump, which is purely built purely for this sort of purpose. You've basically got a pump in here, which is operated with a float switch. This is the float here. You can set the height of the float. So I can set it quite low that when this raises, it turns on and it pumps water out and away somewhere. I'll leave links in the descriptions to this kind of thing. I think this was about 35 quid, something like that. Way overkill for what you need. You could Heath Robinson something together for a lot cheaper, but I thought, you know, it's easy. I can just chuck this in, kind of forget about it, hopefully. And we just need to, the only bit I need to be careful about here is making sure that I get this to rise at the right height. Because although I have a four foot sump, I don't want the water level to get too high. Otherwise it'll be bypassing the majority of the filtration media. So I want this nice and low so as when this raises, it turns on. Dead easy, simple, mechanical thing. It handles solids and all sorts, so I don't need to worry about the blocking. And basically just clamp a hose onto this end and we're away we go. And to get water back in, I'm just going to use this. It's basically fridge line, arrow tubing, quarter inch PVC, whatever you want to call it. It's just fit flexible hose. Uh, rated to hold water at various temperatures. I can run this around the fish room and then just dip the end in the tank so as it just constantly drips. And we can control the flow with something like this on the end of it. So it's just a little valve that I can set so it drips in. And that just means that I can set the flow rate to be whatever water change schedule I want, whether I want 25 litres a day, 250 litres a day, whatever. The main point being I don't actually have to do the water change. Now, it's probably important to mention that although this is the no water change water change, I still will have to get in there periodically because what this isn't going to do is to siphon out any detritus or stuff like that. So as much as this will handle water parameters for a lot longer than I'll need to go between water changes, I will need to do things eventually. It sucks to be me.
So, now I've got water that I can set any rate I want um, from full on whatever that is, 8 litres per minute to a little drip. The slowest of trickles. And you really get quite fine control with these. So I'll measure that, see what we're flowing at, uh, but I'm just going to leave it at that for the moment. I'm fairly happy with that, the fish seem interested in it. So now we move on to getting water out. And that's the sump pump plumbed in. So I've just got it going across the floor at the moment. Well, I'll reroute that later. I wanted to kind of dial in, figure out how many liters per day I want to put in. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's my foolproof, all but power cuts. It's a foolproof system for water changes that I don't actually need to do anything. So that is how you really do the no water change system. You actually do a water change. You just don't do it. Does that make sense? No. So given that I'm only going to be doing a drip in there, even if there is a power cut, there should be enough time for me to notice that there's been a power cut for me to then come down and sort something out before it starts overflowing. And the, the capacity in the sump is like, it's probably got a couple of hundred litres before it starts to overflow. So we should be all good there. Uh, and yeah, and I'm pretty happy with that. So now I don't need to worry about how long it's going to take to do the water changes in here, just because the massive volume is making it take too long. That was the only bit I didn't like. Now we can go on with enjoying the tank. I will probably go and do the rest of the fish room one day, but I'm not entirely happy with the layout of the tanks. I might be swapping some tanks around, getting a few bigger tanks and moving smaller tanks over to one side, that type of thing. So I'm going to wait until that's done, until I start thinking about that. But if you are interested in this kind of thing, make sure you click that subscribe button, follow along for any future updates. If you have any of your own tips and tricks, leave them in the comments or come and join me at 9 p.m. Friday UK time. We do a live stream most weeks. Um, come and let me know what you think and we can have a bit of a chat about all manner of things. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.